Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know it's been a minute since I posted a video, and this kind of happens to me a lot in the Christmas season. Um, I just don't have as much time as I normally do throughout the year to paint, make videos, and then do all the things that I normally do on a regular basis. So that's why I haven't been posting. I'm still painting, I'm still doing all the things that I normally do, I just haven't had enough time to edit some videos. I've got like four or five videos that I've just got to edit, but I just finding the time is a little bit difficult sometimes. But anyway, um, this painting was specifically because I am currently working on another large Western painting. Now, after the last painting, which, side note, that video has done very well, and as you can see, at this point, it's like 200,000 views, which is by far the most the most views that I've ever gotten on a video. It's It's been phenomenal, and I appreciate all of you guys that have supported me through that. And after that video was done, after the painting was done, I kind of took a break from painting in general, because right at the end, I was putting a lot of time, I was putting a lot of work and hours into that painting, trying to get it finished. I mean, once you've been working on a painting for basically 300 days, you're kind of done with it. And so I kind of gotten a little bit burnt out, so I kind of took a break. Um, and then I got this commission, and I was like, well, I need to kind of refresh everything. And I wanted to try to do this painting without looking at a reference photo. And I tried to do it. It didn't really turn out that well because I'm not that good yet. I'm not able to capture the light correctly just from my imagination, especially if I don't have a clear image. I'm, I'm still working on that and getting better at that, but that's just something I'm not able to do at this time in my uh, in my career, I guess, and with the experience that I have. So I pulled up an image online and I just kind of copied verbatim what it is with some slight changes, but pretty much exactly what the reference photo was. But I made a point to make it more messy and I did something that I've never done in a painting before and I started in the center as you can see, and I kind of worked my way out, and I left the center as the focal point. Now, something that is very, <clears throat> something that is kind of difficult for me to do at this point is getting the values of the colors, your saturations, and your intensity, or your hue, or brilliance, depending on which word you want to use, to be correct but not only correct, to fit well with one another. So you've got your base colors and you've got your kind of fundamental spectrum that you're working with, and to try to keep all the colors in a way that complements each other and isn't going to be clashing. Now, that required me to kind of go back over some things, as you can see, and you will see throughout this painting, I'll kind of go back and add some more red tones or more orange tones into something where I didn't really like what something was. And I really wanted to kind of keep moving on this painting. I mean, this painting didn't take me very long. It's maybe like two hours worth of work, two or three hours of, of time, because it's, it's easy to tell, it's easy for me to tell how long I've been working on painting because, okay, phone, shut up you on silent. Anyway, sorry about that. It's easy for me to tell how long I've been working on a painting because I video everything that I do and I can just compile all the footage and slap it in my program and it says, okay, this there's four hours of the footage. So I'm like, okay, that's exactly how much time I spent on it. It's kind of a more accurate way of doing it. But anyway, so I wanted to kind of make this one into the paintings that I've always admired myself personally as an artist, which is the ones that are kind of messy when you get up close to them and put you in your backup, they've got a lot of clarity. I really, really like that. And so I was kind of going, hmm, how can I do that? Because it's actually easier to do those kind of messy paintings than it is to make everything crystal clear. But it, it like, like with a Western painting, some of it wasn't absolutely detailed and so some of it wasn't like crystal clear and it still looked good because there's you can do that in art as long as you have those as long as you follow the rules as your values and saturation and shading and your color as long as you follow those rules you will achieve a good looking painting even though it's not hyper realistic it will still look real and it will still look clear even though there's not actually that much detail 
Now, another thing that I did with this painting that may look a little strange right now, but I did balance that out at the end, is I actually used way too bright of highlights for this one. This one, it's not, you're not supposed to be adding straight titanium white when you're a quarter of the way through a painting. Like that's just not something you're supposed to do. But sometimes you can break those rules depending on what feel you want. And I really wanted a feel of a very, I don't know if hot or bright, I guess you could kind of combine those, a very bright white look to it. Now, I don't really feel like I captured a hot looking painting because I didn't, there, the, there's too many darks and there's too many bright colors in the painting and in the final resolution for it really to look like it's very hot, but it does look like it's a very bright picture. And I really wanted that, something that was like overexposed almost. Like you take a picture of something and there's too much, too much sun for the, for the lens and the aperture that you have for your camera and it kind of blows out the image. But it still captures that emotion that I was looking for, which is a very bright, over, overly bright painting. I feel like I achieved that. If I had to do it over again, I may have toned those down a little bit, but I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. It was an experiment anyway, and that is something that I would recommend doing if you're an artist, is experiment with different paintings. Do not always paint to sell something. Sometimes, like when, when I'm choosing concept for my paintings, like what am I gonna use, how am I gonna do this? Like, what do I want? And into that dialogue goes the question of, is this going to sell as a painting? You don't always need it to sell. Sometimes you need to paint for your experience and you need to paint to become a better artist and not everything should be fit through the lens of whether or not it's going to be a sellable piece. Now, if you're an artist who's not really interested in selling, then obviously that doesn't apply to you. But for me, eventually I'd like to make this my full-time job, but it is, it's, it's, it's not something that I feel like I am, I have mastered at this point. Painting, I am nowhere near where I wanna be. I wanna be able to paint stuff very quickly without much effort that looks very, very good. And the only way you can do that is if you are very experienced and you are very good at what you do. And I am nowhere near that. And part of that is because I have a day job and I don't have enough time to really spend on the paintings that I want, but nothing good worth having comes easily. That's what my dad always said, and I believe in that firmly. So it's gonna take work and it's gonna take time. And I feel like I've, I've, I've gained a sufficient level of expertise in painting to be able to do kind of what I want. But anyway, most of that, all that is to say that as an artist, don't be afraid to paint something specifically to learn. And you're not really worried about selling it and you're not really, really worried about whether or not someone is gonna like it because I got news for you. If you're getting into art and you've just started, there are so many different tastes and genres of painting that most people will like, some people will not. You have no way of knowing what someone is gonna want. So if you try to chase what people want, more than likely all you're gonna do is start turning into a cliche painting where it's like, oh yeah, this is sold before and this was really good, so I'm gonna do what's been done before. Try to be original. Do stuff that hasn't been done before because in that, one, you're going to be unique and that's what people are gonna talk about and your art is going to be set apart and going to be recognizable in comparison to others. And I would recommend staying away from the cliche paintings. Let the people do what they wanna do as far as that's concerned, but if you're trying to be an artist and you're trying to do something that you're going to be remembered by, you aren't gonna be remembered as an artist if you do and copy versions of what other people have done. And that's something that I've always try to keep in mind when I'm doing paintings. But anyway, this painting is for sale on my website if you want to get a print of it. Well, if you want to get the original, it's available on my, on my website. But if you would like to buy prints of this painting or any other painting that I sell, I am now doing prints of all my work on my website. 
So if you want to go check that out, go to chemtrichemist.com or click the link in the description and go check it out. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I will try to post a couple more videos before the end of the year. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around and not unsubscribing from my channel because I'm not posting very often. But if you enjoyed this painting, it's on my website, chemtrichemist.com. Thanks for watching.